Hey everybody, Travis here at Silka. Wanted to do a video here on tire pressure and our calculator. So we launched a tire pressure calculator because we got all sorts of questions about what what pressure should I run? I got new tires um, and that tool came out and it was really helpful. Four or five years ago we did a video on how to use it. Give, give you guys and, and gals uh, some insight into how the calculator works, where it's pulling data from, kind of how it's thinking. Uh, and how we developed it uh, really to be a tool, uh, a tool that everybody can use, uh, but leveraging uh, something like five, six years of Pro Tour tire pressure data. And so the... But things have changed a little bit. Tires keep getting bigger. Uh, the events people are doing are getting a little different. And five years ago, gravel really wasn't that big of a thing. So wanted to go through kind of how we look at the tire pressure calculator now, how it can help you, um, what it does, what it doesn't do, and how that might help your ride. One of the questions that we don't get a ton anymore is why tire pressure matters. I think that most people are, are really kind of getting on that bandwagon, uh, but it's a good place to start. Why tire pressure matters. It's one of the biggest marginal gains where you're losing an awful lot. In rolling resistance, we have two different two different major pieces that go into that, and we'll get into that later. If we get to a tire pressure that's a little bit too high, maybe 5% too high, you might have 10 watts of loss uh, compared to the optimal pressure. Whereas if you're a couple PSI too low, you're probably looking at a watt or two, maybe three of a, of a loss there. So paying attention to the tire pressure really matters, not only for the rolling resistance efficiency, but your comfort, um, grip, all those kinds of things. Uh, puncture protection, uh, tire pressure plays a role in that as well. So definitely something that we really want to pay attention to. Um, but then we'll go through here on the tire pressure calculator. The first thing I want to talk about is what we're actually calculating. So there's a bunch of different calculators out there that use different thing, different inputs to get different answers. What we're calculating is the breakpoint pressure. So when you have casing losses and uh, surface impedance losses, those are the two main factors uh, I mentioned earlier. So casing losses is what we've known for years and years, right? As your tire pressure goes down, your tire gets squishier, it feels slower. As you pump it up, it gets harder, it feels faster. Um, and for the most part, the higher the pressure, the lower the casing losses. The other one is surface impedance, and I like to think of that a lot as turning the surface into little hills. You know, if you have a wood velodrome, those imperfections are almost nothing. Uh, whereas if you're on chip seal pavement, you know, those imperfections are, are much larger. When you ride over them with a really hard tire, you have, that whole system, the bike, rider, everything, is going to go up and down by the height of those imperfections. Um, and that leads to losses. So the breakpoint pressure is where your casing losses come down to the point where your impedance losses start to take over as the major factor. And that breakpoint is what we're trying to calculate. It's going to give you the best spring rate to go the fastest. What that's not going to do is give you the best tire pressure in every scenario. If uh, I like to think of, you know, if you're on a, if you're trying to race a cyclocross race and it's a muddy, slippery course and grip is gonna be the primary factor to make you go faster, then the optimal tire pressure uh, spring rate doesn't really matter. You're looking for grip. That can be kind of the same in uh, mountain biking too. If you're on a single track trail and you know really trying to make sure that you can carry speed through corners and things like that, you might need to lower your pressure from what the optimal spring rate would be. But mostly for road, uh, gravel, kind of straight line riding, the tire pressure calculator is going to get you really, really close to the optimal pressure for your setup. We'll walk through the tire pressure calculator and the different inputs, uh, and then how that might differ from others, how you should look at that input. The first one being weight. Really, we're looking for total system weight. To think of this, if you got a scale out, got your bike, put your helmet on, your kit, your, if you're putting your phone in your pocket, your water bottles, anything that you're going to take out on that ride, go step on the scale and what is that way, that whole system. It's also a good exercise. I think you might be a little bit surprised at um, j just how much of an effect some of these, these ancillary items and, and uh, things we carry with us can have. You know, I think it's pretty easy to say, oh, I'm a... 165 pounds and my, you know, my bicycle weighs 15 pounds and 
therefore that's my you know my my system weight is 180 and then you step on the the scale and i think you'll be surprised to see that it's probably five to seven pounds uh heavier than that just because you know you you've got your shoes and your helmet and your clothing and all of that other stuff any spares you're carrying and then really for as much as we all love to be weight weenies, uh, it's always surprising how heavy water is, right? So a couple of water bottles on there, and you know, you'll notice a big change. Um, it's not going to make a massive fluctuation, but you know, if you're within a couple pounds, you're probably okay. But if you start getting outside of that five, ten pound um, increment, you're going to want to make sure that you get a little bit closer. Surface condition is probably the one that we get the most questions on. So we start start out with the most perfect uh, surface that most cyclists would ever see in a wood velodrome. Uh, it's a lot of times sanded, it's, it's super smooth, very little imperfections, narrower tires at really high pressures are still going to be the fastest option there because the impedance losses are so low. As we move down, we're lucky enough to have an outdoor velodrome here in Indianapolis, Major Taylor Velodrome, uh, so we get to do some testing out there. You go to new pavement, that freshly paved road, um, you can actually see some of these pictures on our tire pressure calculator. There's a little link right below the surface um, selection to show you kind of an example. Uh, the worn pavement, that's going to be just a little bit older, but still in pretty good shape. Um, it's going to be a little bit slower than that new pavement. Maybe it's the six month or a year old uh, new paved road. Then you go to your category one gravel. I think of this as like the crushed gravel, multi-surface or multi-use path uh, you might see on some like rail to trail programs, things like that. And then you move down to poor pavement and chip seal. That's where here in Indiana, we get to do a lot of riding. Um, as soon as you get out into the country roads, it's the pavement gets pretty poor, pretty, when we say heavy, just slow moving. That's gonna be the selection for that scenario. You know, we have the category two gravel, uh, if you think of different events out there, I think that's probably the easiest way to describe them. But Category 2 gravel, you're probably looking at uh, gravel worlds in Lincoln, Nebraska. The gravel's in fantastic shape. It's really fast rolling. Um, SBT, they always call it champagne gravel. Um, that's probably most of that course. So if you have a uh, maybe a tame surface at that course, that's, that's what you're looking for. Category 3 gravel, um, you know, I would look at it most of the big sugar course that way down in Bentonville it's pretty chunky uh, there's definitely some sections that are worse but the vast majority of that course probably category three most of the unbound course kind of in that same scenario uh, until you start getting to if the if the section has a name it's probably in the category four gravel section which takes us right into that that's going to be really the roughest the roughest types of conditions that you're going to see out there we just did Unbound this year, so Divide Road, Little Egypt, uh, some of the little bit more aggressive sections of the Big Sugar course, things like that. And again, take a look at the picture um, on the tire pressure calculator. That'll really help. You you might not be exactly one of those, but you might fall one in between one or the other. Um, so you just kind of have to make that decision and maybe take the tire pressure recommendation and adjust it that little bit. And if you really want to go the extra mile, uh, we did a interview with Robert Chung on the Chung method a couple years ago. We'll link that in the description. You can go test the tire pressure for yourself for your exact setup on that exact course and use the tire pressure calculator as a starting point. One of the other questions we get on surface selection a lot of times is which one do I select? I'm in a multi-surface event. We're going to be riding on some pavement. There's probably some category four gravel, but then most of it's pretty nice. How do you select it? So there's a couple different ways to go about this. We work with a lot of the top pro athletes. They're probably looking at that as where do I think the race is going to be won? Um, when we work with riders in the uh, racing Perry roubaix the wind direction has a big uh, impact on whether the race is probably going to be made on pavement or cobbles and that'll totally change which direction they want to go. Do they want to optimize for the pavement or the really rough cobble sections? Another way to go about it is just the most common surface. You know, if you've got a 100 mile ride and 70 of it's on pavement and 10 miles is on some chunky trails and the other 20 is on pretty light gravel, maybe you want to optimize a little bit more towards the road or gravel section, um, whatever that vast majority of everything is gonna be. The next piece on the calculator is measured tire width. This is really, really important. Probably the biggest uh, factor on this list and on the calculator is your measured tire width. Other calculators do it a little bit differently. We have a lot of faith in our customers and our users that you know you can go ahead and measure your own tire. We really like a nice little set of digital calipers. We'll link those in the 
description below. You can even use a paper clip and bend it to the width, measure it, um, a bunch of different uh, pretty cheap caliper options out there that you can use too. The other, the other way to do this is your internal rim width and the printed tire width. And really what you're doing there is guessing. They're doing a little bit of, a little bit of educated guessing on if you have a 25 mil internal and a 35 mil tire, it might blow out to 37 or 38, you know, whatever that might be. We're just asking you to tell us that it's 38 and then we can get a really accurate reading that way. I personally, I have set up the same my make and model of tire with three different tires in the same size and had three different measurements on the same wheel. It's definitely a better way to go about measuring it than guessing. Wheel diameter is the next one on here. This is pretty self-explanatory, just the size of the wheel. I don't think we need to go into too much more detail about that. Tire type is the other one we get a lot of questions on. We start out at a uh, high, high end casing, kind of a supple casing with either set up tubeless or a latex tube. That's gonna be, those tires are gonna be your Continental GP5000s, your Vittoria Corsa Pros, Pirelli P0, that line. You're probably not gonna see any gravel tires in here. Maybe some of the really high-end uh, XC mountain bike tires, the uh, Schwalbe Thunderbirds, Continental Race Kings, those kind of tires probably fall into that category. The mid-range casing still set up tubeless with a latex tube. There, we're probably looking more at the Continental Four Seasons, the Vittoria Next uh, line, kind of that next tier down. Maybe a little bit more of a training tire, but not, not when you get into the whole puncture proof kind of uh, setup. The next one down below that is just that same mid-range casing tire with a butyl tube. And then below that, we have puncture resistant tires. That's gonna be your, your Continental Gator Skins, your Maxxis Refuses, you know, really where speed is not the goal, saving a flat is. And those are gonna be down towards the bottom of that lip. All those different tires are a little different, but that gives us a pretty good place. Like I said, it's a good starting point. We have four different options there. The next one is average speed. We get a lot of questions here of what those average speeds mean. We like to make it a general description to, to try to uh, make sure that we're not over inflating. I think, you know, if somebody asks you how fast the group ride was, is a lot like getting asked what your FTP is. It's pretty much always elevated. If the group ride was going 28 miles an hour, it probably did at some point, uh, but you probably averaged 22 or, you know, something like that. We started about 14 miles an hour, go up to 24. Um, so that whole range will go somewhere in there to give you a pretty good idea. The weight distribution on the bike is just what type of bike you're riding and an average of how much weight we think is probably front and rear uh, to help with offsetting the tire pressure a little bit there. That's the easiest one. You could put your email in uh, down below if you want to hear from us on different things about tire pressure or Silka as a brand. Click calculate and you'll get a really good uh, calculation of the brake point pressure. It might be a couple pounds here or there, uh, one way or the other off. Uh, but if you want to go do that testing, like I said before, we'll link the Robert Chung video down below, and you can get the spot-on pressure that's best for your situation. I will say you want to make sure you're using the same pump, uh, a really accurate gauge, whether that's you know our Super Pista Digital or you know another accurate tire gauge to make sure that when you go inflate it the next time, you're actually getting to the same pressure. There can be a pretty big variety in what, what is being measured or how that pressure is being read. One of the other things that I really wanted to cover is what is not in the tire pressure calculator. We talked a little bit about internal rim width, why that's not in our calculator. We don't we don't really care what the internal rim width is because we are asking you to measure the tire. You know, I know there's another calculator out there that people like. If you use the internal rim width and the printed size and it lines up with the measured width, then you get a really similar pressure reading. We get customers sometimes that will write in and say the, the other calculator is five PSI higher or lower or you know something like that and it's almost always because the guess is different. The other one is hooked versus hookless. This one is a big caveat, I think, that, like we said earlier, we are calculating the brake point pressure. Sometimes you might not have a tire and rim combination that can work with the brake point pressure. So the big example or the most common example is, is hookless. Other calculators have built that in for safety to make sure that you're not uh, pumping up a hookless wheel to 90 PSI because you're probably gonna break the wheel or at least have a tire blow off. What we're doing is calculating again that brake point pressure. It doesn't mean that it's a good option for you. So if your calculation comes out to 
85 PSI and the max tire pressure on your rim is 72, do not go above 72. If you go to 75 or 78, you're putting yourself and everybody you're riding with at risk. You either need to run a lower pressure that's safe to run on the rim and it'll be a suboptimal pressure or you need to get a bigger tire to run the optimal pressure for that rim. Definitely don't mess around with the hookless tire pressure limits. They are very much a limit, not a suggestion. The other piece, we, we, got, we used to get a question a lot about clinchers versus tubulars. Why is there no selection? Really, it, again, it goes back to that it doesn't really matter. Uh, we're measuring the casing width, so we don't really care that much what the tire construction is. We just want to know what that width is. The clincher versus tubular. Tubulars are always going to be what they say they are because they're a sew-up tire by construction. Uh, that's not going to change as much as a clincher tire might depending on how the hook is. Tire inserts is another one. Again, it just doesn't really change the brake point pressure. You're filling some volume in there, but the pressure is going to be the same, which means your spring rate is still going to be the same on the tire. So those are going to be your optimal pressures whether you're running an insert or not. When you're measuring the tire, like I said, a big piece of that is that it can vary wildly, you know, two, three millimeters from the printed width to the measured width and even from tire to tire. So you definitely want to make sure you're actually measuring. And what we're measuring here is the casing width, not the tread. Just to kind of illustrate this, we have a 650B by 47 tire here. What you can do is you can measure it and if you get the side knobs, you know, that'll measure out to 47. But we really want to measure the casing width. And on this tire, it's 43 and change. 47 to 43 will change your tire pressure calculation pretty significantly. Uh, on the rear wheel here, we put this on just for demonstration purposes, but this is a 32 mil GP5000. When you measure the casing there, it measures to a little over 34. So 32 to 34 will definitely give you a different pressure reading. I just can't uh, reiterate enough how much the actual measured width matters, not the printed width on the tire. All right, thanks for watching the video, and we have a ton of other resources on our website. Um, mentioned in another video that we did on tire pressure, uh, the tire pressure calculator a few years ago. We'll link all these in the description. There's an awesome video uh, with an interview with Robert Chung on how to do this testing at home. All you need is a power meter and a speed sensor, or sometimes even just a speed sensor. We also have some really great blog posts about how to use the tire pressure, why tire pressure matters, how big of an impact it is, and how it works. So. Check out all those resources at silka.cc, and we'll see you in the next video.